want you people to know at home TV that if you get up and go get a soda, a glass of beer, go to the bathroom, you might miss it. This is going to be one of the most exciting fights that y'all have seen in a long time. And Eddie Gregory won't go past round four. James Scott, the uncrowned light heavyweight champion of the world, said that. Is that convincing? <laughs> just heard is James Scott, and this is his home, Rawway State Prison, the maximum security prison in Woodbridge, New Jersey. Inside these walls and bars, Scott works out in his own boxing program, but he cannot leave the walls to fight professionally. So for the first time in boxing history, an inmate is fighting a professional fight inside a prison. As HBO Sports presents Boxing Behind Bars, the main event, inmate James Scott versus the number one contender for the light heavyweight crown, Eddie Gregory. Good evening, everyone. My name is Len Berman, working tonight with Don Dunphy, Larry Merchant, and Sugar Ray Leonard. We are all about to witness an event that's never happened before in television sports, a top boxing contender coming inside the walls of a prison to fight an inmate. The inmate, James Scott. Needless to say, this is the biggest night of his life. He is a man who's here because of a parole violation after an armed robbery conviction. He is taking on the top contender for the WBA light heavyweight crown, Eddie Gregory. Gregory taking a big risk by coming inside these prison walls. Now, the fight will take place inside an auditorium, which was the site of bloody riots seven years ago. But tonight, 450 paying customers from the outside world will watch this fight. The inmates, 1,100 strong, are in another portion of this prison. They are watching the fight on three large screens. I will join them there. We'll have a camera to capture their reactions. Why is this fight going on inside a prison? They have a special program here to train inmates to become fighters once they reach the outside. For more on that, here's Larry Merchant. Larry? James Scott is a very, very unusual man, and so is the boxing program here at Rawway. Last week, we came here to take an inside look at both phenomena, a very inside look. Stone walls do a prison make here, and inside them dwells a community of outcasts. Surprisingly, however, there is as much space devoted to a complex of shops and classrooms as to cells, and an effort of sorts is made to train the inmates in skilled occupations. For some, it's a chance to find a trade. For others, a way to pass the time. I would say a good 60% of the inmate population have never had a real, what would you call a bona fide job. They've had earned money wherever they can, catch as catch can, but to be a professional, they just could not call themselves that. We have found that once a man feels that he has learned a trade, has become a mechanic in whatever field or whatever area he wants to, he has a different outlook on life. He has also a lot more respect for himself, and he carries himself that way, and it shows it. This also is occupational training at Rawway. For these inmates, this is a job. They're paid for it, as in other programs. They earn points toward parole and days off their sentences. In theory, they'll become professional fighters. It may be the most real job training that we can offer to, uh, I think, a significant percentage of our population, the young, the youngster from, from the ghetto areas who grows up wanting to be the Willie Mays, the Muhammad Ali, and who uh, has all the ability in the world. There is some talent, there is hope and desire, and sometimes a realization that the chance has come too late I wouldn't have been and too little. I'd have had all that on my mind, and I'd have had something to, you know, to look forward to, to, co to accomplishing. So I wouldn't, I don't think I would have been here. The, the long-range effect may be questionable, but for those men, there is an immediate benefit in prison discipline. The boxing program is set to channel some of the prison tough guys. Would normally get into a fight well, without the, you know, the snap of the fingers, they would think twice now because they need their hands to fight. And they would rather do with gloves than without gloves. James Scott, the spearhead of Rawway's boxing program, is a prison celebrity, a role he's comfortable with. While he seems to inspire as much envy as admiration in other inmates, prison officials feel his effect is beneficial. I think that it's you know just another expression of a, of a person's uh, 
desire to do something construct constructive while in jail. And I think that's what James Scott is doing. Scott Sell in Rahway is here in three wing, where after a reputation as incorrigible, he has been trying to beat his past, to fight his way out of prison again. His first offense at age 13 was truancy. He spent the last 16 out of 18 years in prison. The most he's made out of prison as a boxer was $1,200 when he fought in Miami, Miami Beach for the Dundees. In prison, he makes $3 a day as a paraprofessional. This fight could begin another passage to freedom and a career. A new surrounding. I had never been in prison before, and I was forced to do what anybody else had to do, survive. Did you actually learn how to fight in prison? Yes. What circumstances? When? Okay, uh, I got my first pair of gloves when I was 10 years old. I was on the streets, my uncle gave them to me. My father showed me a little bit about boxing, but he never really spent time with me. Okay, and I went to Janesburg, and Janesburg, it's mandatory that you fight or you learn how to box because that's a status symbol. Right? So, you know, the prison is a world too. So you try to get status so you learn how to box. I went to Annandale, they had boxing gloves in Annandale and they had matches in Annandale, three minute rounds. Right, so I put me boxing the same thing. When I went to Bordentown, I had my first three amateur, my first five amateur fights. I won three, I lost two. Okay, that was my first experience. And one of the things that uh, thrilled me is I always thought I could be a little bit better than another guy watching the guys do it. I, th I thought it was a little more exciting, something that the crowd wanted to see, that slam, bang, toe-to-toe -to -toe action. Okay, from Bordentown, I went to prison. The guys in prison were so good, I couldn't even put the gloves on until around 66, 67. From 67 to now, I beat everything in the prison houses. You've been in prison since 1960, most of your adolescent and adult life. Why should we believe that if you became champion and could come out of prison, that you can live outside of the prison and society? Well, first of all, uh, you got to remember that when I was in prison, uh, or when I was locked up, uh, I was young. You know, uh, I had no goals, no values. I spent 15 months in the room building, uh, and uh, my trainer was down there. I spent 15 months down there. That's the worst place I've ever been in my life. And, uh, I spent down there, and that gave me a chance to think. Uh, I think when a man is forced with thought, you know, under adversity, you feel, you're forced to think. That's when you begin to realize what are you going to do and what you have to do. And I think it was then that I really decided I've got to get a chance. I just got to make it, you know. I can't quit now. Nobody's ever went straight to the top. If you ask a college professor, how long did it take you to get here? I quote Dr. Freddie Pacheco. One time I was getting ready to give up, and he says, you know, I used to look down a, a tunnel, and all I could see was the light. I didn't know what was in the tunnel. All I knew was there was a light at the end of the tunnel. I just followed that light. Nobody knows what they got to go through to get to the top. This is where I wind up going through to get to the top. But what difference does it make as long as you get there? The hardest job in the institution is getting around the stuff in here. You know, you have people that are envious. You have officers that are envious who, you know, or when I say envious, you know, will do anything they can to stifle your creative abilities or stop you from being successful. I don't think it would be very, very, very hard to train for a championship fight with all the distractions in here. And I said before, you know, you find some guys, that, for instance, if, if a game was, a basketball game was scheduled and boxing is scheduled, there's a toss-up between boxing and basketball, the bag, the bag may get destroyed. So the basketball game will go on because there's a conflict of interest. You got some guys in here that can play basketball almost as good as Dr. J. They never had a chance to be discovered, you know. And the reason why I say that is because, I mean, let's face it. All right, I got all these books in my room, so by reading and writing, I learn how to talk. Okay, now, if a person spends five to six to seven hours every day doing something, another guy spends an hour a day doing something, who has a better chance of being the best at it? History is made every day. There's always new incidents arising, you know. And this is unique. You know, a couple of years ago, this would have been unthought of. So now, the possibilities of a prisoner getting a chance is according to his ability. I don't think that to look at the, the fact that he's in prison, maybe it's bad for the, for, the, for the public image, but I think that what will shine is that his good deeds outweigh his bad deeds. All you're supposed to see is the title. You know, the guy, the, the guy has won. He's a good fighter. The only people like Cosell and maybe you were, well, years ago you were in prison. What course, you know, that's not important. You know, what we're doing now. 
you know, like you got a lot of people that have done a lot of things and made a lot of mistakes. And we don't always bring up what you did in the past, you know. This is my first chance at exposure. I don't think I knew what to say back then. I wasn't ready back then, back in 1974. And Gregory, it's just an opportunity to expose to the public that there is somebody lurking behind the shadows, waiting for his opportunity. And he's much better than uh, the current light heavyweight contender that they have out there. All of them has been beaten. I have been beaten. But I, I think about this all day long, 24 hours a day. I eat, sleep, and drink this. He's got an hour in the gym, girl, he's got to duck all that. All this publicity on him at one time. Psychologically, I can't see, you know, I just can't see him being ready. And if he is ready, I'm ready. We're going to fight. And I'm going to knock him out. I want, you to, I want you to hear this here. I'm going to knock him out in less, no more than four. No more than four. This guy's actually got to kill me to win. I've talked too much. I've said too much. I've trained too hard. If I didn't beat him, I'd have to retire. It's going to be a fight. If the other guy come in prepared to make it a boxing match, he's mistaken because he's going to be in a war. Here we are with my two colleagues, Don Dunphy, the well-known blow-by-blow announcer, and Sugar Ray Leonard, the well-await contender. Don, you've seen a few million fights in your time. Have you ever heard of a situation like this? Not really, uh, Larry, I haven't. And uh, if you were to ask me, has Scott got much of a chance, I'd say have to say off the cuff that I don't think so. I just can't conceive of an inmate in a prison uh, defeating the uh, number one light heavyweight contender. You However, the important thing here, Larry, is that Scott thinks he can do it, and his mental attitude is very, very good. Uh, he is a professional, you know, and uh, it isn't as though he learned to box in prison. He had 12 fights as a pro, didn't lose any of them, and scored seven knockouts. So he thinks he can do it. You think his lack of experience, Sugar Ray, and the fact that he really hasn't been active among top fighters in recent years will count too heavily against him? Well, I look forward to the early rounds being a very exciting round because for the simple reason, James Scott is a devastating puncher. But as the rounds progress, you will see that Eddie Gregory's his experience was take his toll. Don, a year ago, Eddie Gregory wasn't in a prison. He was fighting for the light heavyweight championship of the world. Tell us something about that fight. Well, the fight was in Turin, Italy, and uh, Eddie claims he won that fight, and a lot of people who saw it on TV and some who were there agree with him. However, I did not see it, I must admit. But uh, I don't think he got any the better of the officiating. Eddie was hit low in this, at this spot, and the referee completely ignored it. It was a flagrant low blow. Galindez is in the black trunks, and this is for the light heavyweight title, WBA version, and Gregory is giving as well as he can take. Galindez moves in, faints him, digs the left hand of the body, and they tie each other up on the inside, and now there was a low blow, uh, actually a tap. It was inconsequential by Gregory, and he was penalized for it. And then, as we saw the scoring later, that one point that he lost on that foul probably cost him the championship. We're in the 14th round now, Galindez's crown is tottering, but he may be slightly ahead as Gregory forces him into the ropes. Gregory in the red trunks digs that left hand of the body again, ties up Galindez on the inside. Gregory at this point seems in charge of the fight, but Galindez is a very, very tough hombre. About 15 seconds left, and there's the final bell, and the winner is Victor Galindez, defending the light heavyweight championship against Eddie Gregory. Eddie, we've just been watching a clip of your title fight. It's a far cry from fighting for the championship to coming inside of a prison. What are your thoughts on the uh, moments before your big fight here? Well, this is like a homecoming to me because everybody know I did a little time myself and uh, surely no problem. This is going to be me and James Scott. I'm not fighting the whole prison system. I'm just fighting James Scott, that's all. What kind of time did you do for what? Uh, like small things, burglary, uh, harassment. I beat up four cops, you know, small stuff like that. So you know what James Scott is thinking. How are you going to deal with that? Hey, this is going to be a technology fight. I'm going to be the technician tonight. You know, I'm just going to utilize all my tools. But isn't this a big risk for you? I mean, you have everything to lose here and not a whole lot to gain. Well, if you're going to be a fighter, you're going to be a fighter. I'm a fighter. I don't duck anyone. I consider myself a champion. I duck no one. I, if, it, if it means I have to come to prison and knock guys out, I'll be here. What's your prediction tonight? Well, I'm not going to predict, but it's going to be a technician-like job. I can't predict that I'm going to win the fight. Eddie, good luck to you. Thank you very much. All right, let's go back to Larry Merchant at ringside. There's Eddie Gregory now, the first one into the ring.
this room is like a little steam bath. It's crowded with about 400 or 500 people. I think he feels any differently than walking to any other small fight club, Sugar Ray, having come behind these walls. You know, like being here, it gives me claustrophobia from the start. <laughs> All right, let's go upstairs to Lem Berman and see what the other inmates here at Railway State Prison are up to and what their thoughts are as we head into this fight. Larry, it's, it's quite a bit cooler up here in the drill hall. Three large screens are uh, against the wall and the windows here. Hundreds of inmates are crowded in. I've got to tell you, highly partisan pro-James Scott. They definitely feel their man's going to win it, right? That's going to win. James Scott all the way. Let's go downstairs to him. You know, we you know, we learned earlier that even those, those inmates favor James Scott, that here at prison, the betting line is three cartons of cigarettes to one in favor of Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> There's no sentiment when it comes to betting. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, man. I guess they've seen a quite a bit of uh, Eddie on, on uh, TV, and I guess they feel that he's a winner. You know, I, you'd have to say that most of these inmates have seen Gregory fight more than they have Scott, actually. Uh, when we were here, uh, we saw that almost every inmate had a television set in his cell. So, uh, in a sense, Gregory may be more familiar to them than their own, uh, the member of their own community. I think they remember that Victor Galendez fight. And there's James Scott. He looks like a, a human skull and bones in that black and white. He looks very awesome. Pretty cool, too. This contest, 12 rounds, the main bout. In the blue corner, he's wearing white trunks with black stripes. He's from Newark, New Jersey. He weighed in at 176 pounds. Let's have a nice hand for the challenger, James Scott. Scott. <laughs> and in the red corner, he's wearing red trunks with a white stripe, weighing at 177 and three quarter pounds. He's from the Brownsville section of Brooklyn, the number one World Boxing Association. at the bell, Larry Hazard. Tony Perez, the referee, has the instructions. They're trying to psych each other. They're really trying to psych each other. <laughs> okay, coming up to round one, scheduled for 12 rounds or less. Eddie Gregory in the red trunks. 28 wins, three losses, and a draw. With 21 knockouts, he's never been stopped. James Scott, 12 wins, no losses, one draw, seven knockouts. Scott looking a little bit like Hurricane Carter, Reuben Hurricane Carter, a shaved head. Who, of course, once was incarcerated here at Rahway and did some boxing here. It's a question in my mind about condition. We know that uh, Scott had a good record. He started out as a professional fighter before he ran into difficulties that caused him to be incarcerated here. And all his 12 fights were before his uh, stay here at Rawway. So he, he didn't learn to box in prison. He learned it the hard way in the pro ranks. Not that learning in prison is very easy. Not too much happening so far. Gregory, a ring-wise veteran who can hurt, and when he gets a man in trouble, can be very devastating with his punches. He came very close to taking the light heavyweight title from Victor Galindez less than a year ago. Galindez since losing it to uh, Mike Rossman, whom uh, Gregory would like to fight for the title. 
So would Yaki Lopez like to fight him? Lopez having knocked out Rossman at the Garden. The round is half over. too much of the style of James Scott yet. I'm seeing James for the first time. Gregory moving behind the jab, calling on his vast to ring experience. Referee Tony Perez. Scott has not been able to fathom uh, Gregory as yet. And Gregory is biding his time, coming in behind that jab. A good left hook to the body by Scott. A minute to go on the round. It's a countdown on the screen. Gregory knows his way around in there. He's been in with the best. Gregory is boxing beautifully at the moment. Scott hasn't got his timing yet. exhibition by Eddie Gregory from Philadelphia and the crowd applauds him for it. Time running out in the round. Only a few seconds left in this round. Crowd was telling the truth that James Scott can really hit. A couple times he hurt Eddie, Eddie with those stiff right hands. Well, and he's got a reputation as a murderous body puncher, Scott. <coughs> That's true, but you know, as the, the fight go on, you will see the experience of Eddie Gregory come out. Because what Eddie trying to do, he's trying to make Scott miss, and then he's going to take advantage of the opportunity when Scott begins to tire. <laughs> Maker at Madison Square Garden, and he said that when Scott was fighting professionally out of Miami, that he had a, a reputation that you didn't want to fight him. Round two. Round two. Eddie Gregory in the red trunks in Philadelphia, from Railway State Prison in the white trunks. James Scott. Scott has long arms. He's probably got the reach on Gregory a little bit. They're about the same height. Gregory is boxed beautifully. Tying up Scott on the inside again. Tony Perez over to get them apart. Scoring on a rounds basis. Good right by Gregory with a supplementary point system if the rounds come out even on a card. There is a mandatory eight count. However, there is no three knockdown rule, and a man cannot be saved at, by the bell. Knocked down near the ringing of the bell, he must get up before the count of ten, even though the bell sounds, or he will be counted out, except in the last round. Two minutes left in round two. Now, we'll say, Don, the tip of this fight, I doubt to go to distance because both guys are really throwing those punches in there. They really throw a lot of body shots and a lot of stiff left and right, right hands. I don't know uh, if I agree with you there, Sugar Ray, because I've seen Gregory, and sometimes when he thinks he's winning a fight, he gets a little bit lazy and uh, really doesn't try to knock out the opponent. He seems content to win just on points. But you know, both guys are really winging those punches in there. Now Scott is hitting harder, and he's finding Gregory. He's going to make Gregory open up. Gregory will find out that he just cannot coast along. He'll have to fight, and he's not fought so far. Scott is compressing the action, even though he's been wild at times. A minute to go in the round, round two. Good punches by Scott. He's got an edge in this round, Scott has. Up 
Gregory still boxing well with that bobbing and weaving and rolling and riding. And but he's slipping. not hitting. <laughs> he's doing all of that, but he isn't hitting very much. Half a minute to go in the round. I think Gregory's waiting, waiting for Scott to tie because he's uh, not throwing that many shots. Not, he's not throwing that many punches either. That was a good shot by Scott. That'll make Eddie think a little bit. Seconds to go in the round. Good round for Scott. There's the bell ending round two. Crowd like that one. Well, up here in the drill hall, they've come to life as that was definitely James Scott's round, taking it to Eddie Gregory. And the crowds really come to life up here. How do you think your guy's doing? Yeah. Scott is doing good. He's going to, he's going to win. He's going to win, definitely. Yeah. How do you think he's doing? All the way. Scott's all the way. Here's some of the action. Let's go back to ringside. Well, here you see where Scott is doing much of the damage. He's throwing uppercuts, and he's really connecting well. Off of what you've seen in this brief time, can, is this man a world-class fighter? He's game. He, he has the punching ability to be a, a world-class fighter. There's no question about that. You're a little skeptical. You want to wait to see what happens over the next seven, eight rounds. In the later rounds, I'm curious, very curious. There we are in round three. Round three. Round two took a surprising turn with uh, Scott dominating the action and scoring with heavy shots on Eddie Gregory. Scott on the white trunks showing a jab now. Gregory in the red trunks. Offensively, Gregory has done very little. And it must have hurt me because he opened up with smart shots on the jaw. They were not cream puff punches. Gregory trying to get cute. Now scoring with his jab. You know, Don, we talked about Eddie getting relaxed once in a while, but I think the way the sky's applying pressure, Eddie doesn't have time to relax. He has to constantly punch and move. I would agree with him. But I wonder if he knows that. Scott pressing the attack again, but he's a little bit wild. Two minutes to go in the round. And Scott's corner, they're yelling, take your time. He is raking the body with good ones now. Good body punches. Scott is a hard hitter. He fights out of a modified peekaboo style, doesn't he, Don? I think he does, yes. Reminiscent of Floyd Patterson. Although he doesn't lunge in like a kangaroo. Tony Perez, the referee. The New York referee working in Jersey. Thank you, Minister. Gregory claiming a low punch. And the referee agrees with him. Scott is told to keep his punches up. Is talking to keep those punches up. That was a low blow. But it, it, I don't think it was intentional. They were not low. Gregory is actually a knockout puncher. He scored 21 of his 30 fights and ended in knockout. action all the way and if he doesn't lose this round on a low blow that's up to the referee Scott will win this round too Gregory peppered him that time round almost over there's the bell now the referee the referee is not taking the round away from Scott so I think Scott probably won the round. I point out here that in order 
to get this fight. Scott had to give the lion's share of the purse to Gregory. Gregory is getting $15,000 for this fight, and Scott is getting $2,500. The man you see there is Mike Rossman's father, the father of the new WBA the light heavyweight champion. The light heavyweight champion himself, who is from New Jersey, is not here. Perhaps he's uh, scouting a future opponent, uh, the father. This seems to be the center of light heavyweight activity in, in uh, between Philadelphia and New York. Don Richie Cates from New Jersey, a top contender. Ready for round four. Gregory in the red trunk. Scott in the white. Now, get a, Gregory is throwing harder punches now. Scott's been throwing them hard all along. Some have landed, some haven't. Scott is really good to the body now. I'm, I'm pretty sure they had instructions from the corner to go to bat. He's throwing them all over, Ray. Right? <laughs> Very devastating, too. And that's his really his best chance against an experienced fighter, not to give him a chance to use his experience, just swarm all over him. James Scott of the Railway State Prison in the white trunk. Seconds to go in the round. There's the bell. That was a very big round for Scott. I tell you, if Scott can continue that pace, Eddie has his hands full. Playing it cool for the later rounds, but if he takes punishment like this for a few more rounds, he's not going to be too fresh later on himself. That's true. I, I don't think that Ed is trying to lay back now. I really think that Scott has really surprised not only the crowd, but he surprised Eddie also. Sounds like he surprised you a little as well. Oh, yes, my eyes are wide. <laughs> That's a picture of that left eye of Eddie Gregory. It does not look good. That's the on their feet. Take us out for round four. Round five, sorry. Round five. 
Eddie Gregory has been taking a lathering. He's in the red trunks, and James Scott from the Rawway State Prison is on the verge of scoring a tremendous upset. Gregory is the number one light heavyweight contender for Mike Rossman's title, and he could blow it all here as Scott gives him no rest. Gregory is working the body now, trying to slow up Scott, or slow him down, if you will. There is a possibility that Scott could punch himself out. He has missed a lot of punches. Sugar Ray, the miss, miss punches take more out of you, don't they? Yes, especially when you miss. But the way this fight is going, this is what you call a good fight. The crowd's into it, and the fighters are really putting on a good show. I tell you, there are not too many light heavyweights around that give you the action that James Scott has given us right now. I agree. And if he can fight like this for the rest of this fight, there's some promoters who are going to be after him. He's hurting Gregory again. Those are two hard right hands. Gregory's left eye is almost closed. He's going to be a one-eyed fighter for a while tonight. As long as it goes, because he'll have trouble, trouble seeing Scott's right hand coming at him. Gregory's trying to pop shot Scott now and doing it well. A minute to go in the round. hoping that Scott will get very tired. Gregory himself must be tired by now. The pace slows down. Maybe Gregory is getting tired. I mean by Scott. He's still throwing heavy leather. to go in round five. Another good round for Scott, who again is told to keep his punches up. There's the bell ending round five. Up in the drill hall, they are delirious as the inmates watch on three large screens. They were delirious after round four, even more delirious when they saw the close-up of Eddie Gregory's eye. The ring up here is where the inmates work out in the drill hall. They've got basketball courts. They've got weights. They've got a pool table. This is the indoor recreational facility, and right now they think their man's going all the way to the top. Here's the replay. This is a slow-mo here, and it shows that uh, Scott is over Gregory all the way, even looks, though he misses occasionally. Looks like they unleashed He doesn't it. let Gregory get started. No, it looks like they unleashed a tiger from his, you know, from his cage when, he, when they put this man in here in this ring. Well, I've got Scott way ahead as we come up for round six. You know, a fight like this, Don, proves that you should never underestimate a fighter. You know, I don't care whether he's number one or number 20. You should never underestimate him. No, sir, I agree with you. Especially if you're fighting him. Job jab by Scott. Gregory has not been able to do too much of an offensive nature. In the early rounds, he boxed beautifully, but he's not even doing that now. He must know he's behind. He's starting to slug with Scott. Something's got to give. I think what's upsetting Drake is the fact that Scott, he has power in both hands, and he has a very unorthodox style, and the fact that his body's in great condition. He's 
Scott is undefeated as a professional. He's won 12 and lost none with a draw. And seven knockouts. They're over in Gregory's corner. Two minutes left in this round. This is an amazing story unfolding here. James Scott, 31 years old been in prison 16 of the last 18 years and here he is so far leading the man who is the number one contender for the world light heavyweight championship you know now this is what you call fight for survival scott knows if he defeats eddie he has a good chance of becoming the light heavyweight champion of the world Gregory coming back a little bit here. well again keeping Scott off balance there seems to be a swell on Eddie's nose also half a minute to go on the round Gregory's been through a meat grinder it looks they're just above our HBO microphones and cameras of a 12-rounder, the halfway mark. And there's the bell. Well, Larry, I thought uh, Gregory won that round. I did, too, and we're only halfway through the fight if it goes the distance, and uh, maybe James Scott is tired. He threw an awful lot of punches there in the third, fourth, and fifth rounds. and stereophonic sound, both ears, three different people. And he's the man who has to do the fighting. Well, he only hears one. <laughs> Boy, that Dick Taylor, he really gets mad, doesn't he? I think you know what they mean. Round seven. The fight is half over if it goes the distance. <coughs> we'll get an idea of Scott's condition in this round. Maybe Gregory's too. The young men are doing more holding now. You know, Don, experience-wise, this should be a turn point. Because, because Eddie's experience the last, the, last, the last round might be the turning point. Uh, I thought I detected that Gregory was coming back in the last round. We'll see if he can continue it. Scott is well ahead on my card. Four rounds to two, but the fight is only half over. Gregory has a mouth and a lot of swelling below his left eye. He's been chopped up pretty well. Two minutes to go in the round. Scott is lunging in. He may be tired. He's lunging and grabbing. Scott is holding a lot now. Perez at a time getting him apart there. Now it's Gregory doing the holding. And a real lock on him. I would say both fighters are tired. But I believe Greg is really trying to find an opening. again. Gregory has not been able to uh, mount a serious attack, a con continued attack at any time. 
It's been a spot hitter, hitting occasionally. Never threw more than two at a time, while Scott kept up a continuous barrage. Good counter punching by Gregory. Gregory boxing well again. Trying the body. Trying to slow up Scott. Seconds to go on the round. as we present an exclusive boxing special. Sugar Ray Leonard versus Bernie Prado in a 10-round welterweight bout. Sugar Ray, our friend here, remains one of the most charismatic of all of the new crop of fighters, combining ring skills with personality, charm, and intelligence. <laughs> Leonard remains undefeated and moves closer to the inevitable spot at the welterweight crown. This exclusive HBO Sports Boxing Special will be televised live from Portland, Maine at Friday night, November 3rd, on HBO Sports. Ray, what do you know about Bernie Prado? Hey, there's the warden. Sorry to interrupt, but there's the warden. Yeah, yeah. That's He's the warden trying. of the prison. He looks a little worried right now, Robert Hattrack. Earlier, he was cheering when Scott was having his good rounds. It's round eight. Round eight. Gregory using the jab now. Gregory has apparently been told by his corner to get moving or else. The prison authorities here think that a Scott win will help to boost their program and get them some funds, perhaps. A good idea. Even if he doesn't win, if he loses, it's going to be a close fight. He has given more than a good account of himself. Gregory knows, especially from that time. He's been a tremendous fighter. He's fighting one of the top light heavyweights in the world. And he's giving Gregory no rest. He's not scoring all the time, but he won't let Gregory get started. You know, Scott is constantly, he's consistent. He's constantly going punches. And he's applying pressure all the time. And the aggressor. Two minutes left in the round. Round eight of a 12-rounder. Gregory scoring on the inside, so is Scott. Round half over. when you get in close that way. You wonder why Gregory wants to stay on top of him. Uh, Scott appears to be stronger. He's a wicked body puncher. I agree with you. Scott has very long arms, but he still can really apply pressure and throw some, I guess, devastating body shots. Time running down in the round. You can see the time clock in the right hand, lower right hand corner of your screen. Gregory has not been able to move in this round. Half a minute left. Gregory warned by the referee. Looks like Scott has gotten uh, some oxygen this, this round. He seems to be taking over again. 
I guess he's just determined, all right, really. I guess he really wants to win this fight. Seconds to go. Another good round for Scott. There's the bell. Well, they are still cheering upstairs in the drill hall. They think their man James Scott is firmly ahead. The only bit of booing we heard tonight was before the eighth round when they showed a shot of Ward and Haytrack. Of course, they booed. But right now, they're enthusiastic. After eight rounds, they say their man is winning. You've been a friend of James Scott for a long time. Seven right? years, seven years. How do you he's, think he's doing? He's doing good. He's following his philosophy. A quitter never, a uh, winner never quits, and a quitter, and a winner never quits. Uh, no. uh, wait, wait. Uh, quitter, Whatever it is, he's doing quitter, it very well. A quitter never wins, and a winner never quits. Okay. Words to live by. Let's go back to ringside. All right, Len. A quitter never wins, and a winner never We're waiting quits. for the ninth round to come up. Unofficially, I have uh, got ahead. Look at the uh, Vaseline all over the face of Eddie Gregory. Round nine. Gregory in the red trunk. Got in the white. Tony Perez, the referee, he's done a good job. Again, will not let Gregory get started. Scott and then made it to Rawway State Prison, where the fight is coming from tonight. that Scott can take on any of the light heavyweights. I really believe that. Second on a good one here. I think if he continues this, none of the light heavyweights are going to want to take him on. Now Scott is putting on a show. He's very disdainful of Gregory. Gregory having trouble staying out of the left eye. I'll tell you, this is a testimony to what Will can do for a man. Willpower, determination. Going around. I will say this is a fight they long to remember. Half a minute to go on the round. The action is flowing a little. Ever trying for the knockout. <laughs> hey, this is about the hardest fifteen thousand dollars Eddie Gregory will ever earn. Oh, he's blown a big shot by this one, I'm afraid. For his sake. in his arms, no more sting in his punches. He didn't have any all night. There's the bell. Those fire shots in his toes. Uh, here we see Scott put on a little show. In fact, he threw a, a devastating right hand to the body. I say this. to about the mule down. <laughs> that hurt. Just watching it again. The 
fact that Gregory's problem is the fact that he's waiting and he's absorbing too many shots to the body, which is going to slow down his, uh, his speed. Even his arms. I imagine he's a, he's taking a lot of punches on his arms, and he must, he must, arms must feel heavy. Well, this fight is... Let's go to Gregory's corner right here. from here on it'll be to hope that Scott gets over anxious looking for a knockout a little too confident and try to slip in a good right hand which is his knockout punch as we pointed out earlier he's had 23 KOs in his 32 fights so he can punch Gregory Scott is just smiling out at the audience now he probably feels he's got the fight won puncher as a rule, but he's thrown no combinations at all tonight. Most he's thrown is two punches at a time, and that very sparingly. And the South Rick is beginning to swell pretty badly now. 20 seconds to go in the round. No knockdowns. back to his corner like a winner. He thinks he's a winner. He's got two more rounds to go. You know, we Vicky Ferrara working on Eddie Gregory, and Gregory's face is a sight. He looks like he's about to cry. You know, two weeks ago, this was supposed to be a 10-round fight, but the closer the fight uh, came, uh, the more the management of Eddie Gregory decided that uh, they wanted a bit of an edge, and they increased the fight to 12 rounds, hoping that his experience and conditioning would tell on Scott. But it looks like it could be too late for Gregory. So that gives him, at least it gives him two rounds more. If it were a 10-round fight, he's a loser. That's true. You think so, Sugar Ray? I will say so. I got it five. Six, three, and one even. I have it seven to three. There we go in round 11. Now it smashes by Scott. Scott is in great condition, no question about it. Better than Gregory, unquestionable. I was 
Dr. Scott's in superb condition. He yeah. surprised me, I tell you, Doc. He really surprised me. Surprised me. I did not think... As I was wrong. Well, he certainly has no distractions in prison. <laughs> Not at all. That's a point. <laughs> in fact, I think before his next fight, Gregory's manager might want to lock him up. Hands up, son. Hands up. I wonder what's going on here. That's why he thinks they're both too rough. Gregory. This could be a costly night for Gregory, as Larry said before. He's, he's got a title shot in the offing with Mike Rossman. But who knows, after seeing this, Rossman might want to fight him. Gregory seems to con content to throw out a jab and then grab. He may realize that he's lost the fight, and what can he do about it? Gregory has no firepower at all, at least that I can see. One minute left in the round. Of course, if James Scott wins this fight, Goes on to have other fights. I think you're going to see magazine articles written about him. Many newspaper articles will be on television. This might spread the word around the country for other institutions to start boxing programs. And certainly here, the warden who allowed this program to by Scott will really help it take off. There's no question up in the drill hall amongst the inmates who they think is going to win this fight. They feel James Scott is way ahead, and I have to agree with them. It's a remarkable story. A guy incarcerated, unable to go outside and do long road work, go up hills, down hills. Here's a guy who's in a cell most of the time, in prison, 16 in the last 18 years, and he's about to knock off the number one contender and earn a shot at the title. Just a remarkable story. They know up here who the winner is going to be, James Scott, number one. Let's go back to ringside. I was just talking to Matt Franklin, the uh, fine contender from Philadelphia who's supposed to fight Yaki, Yaki Lopez on this very evening, as a matter of fact. And he, he doesn't think that Gregory has a thing left. It's the 12th and final round. Gregory obviously needs to win by a knockout. Can he do it? James Scott in the white trunks. The amazing battler from the Rawway State Prison. An inmate. Sprawled all over Gregory in the red trunks. Gregory, a title shot with Mike Rossman on the line. And is losing this fight. There's an upset tonight. Scoring us on a round basis with a supplementary point system if the rounds come out even on an official's card. We have two judges, former middleweight contender Ernie Durando and Harold Letterman from New York. The referee is Tony Perez. They'll all vote. They're really going in there. He's the last and final round. There's two minutes left, Freddie Gregory. There have been no knockdowns. The only real damage has been to the left eye of Eddie Gregory, outside of Eddie's feelings. And 
they must really be hurt. Scott is really charged up now. I just want to see Scott when this fight is over and they announce him a winner. The round is half over. Of course, my thoughts are unofficial. The judges may disagree. They have before. Well, I hope they don't tonight. There might be a mini riot. And I don't mean by the inmates. Inmate. Again, Scott takes the play away. A minute to go. A minute left in the fight. to imagine the hopes and dreams of a man like James Scott coming to a culmination here like this. It must be an awesome feeling. There have been prisoners who have gone on to be outstanding fighters outside of prison, of course. Sonny Liston, Ron Lyle, Hurricane Carter. Half a minute left in the fight. And here's a man doing it right inside prison. Ten seconds left. There will not be a knockout. Scott continues right to the end. There's the final bell. A big win for James Scott. Sugar Ray and Larry are up in the ring. <coughs> the ring is as an L.A. <coughs> this is reminiscent of the heavyweight championship fight. Eddie Gregory is walking around as though he thought he won. If he thinks he won, I don't know what fight he looked at. Here's James Scott. He's a very happy young man. Your attention, please. The winner, by unanimous decision, James Scott. Here are the inmates in the drill hall. Eddie, was he tougher than you could have imagined? A man has been in prison for as long as he has. Well, I always knew he was going to be tough. You know, we got two of the top fighters in the whole world. You know, this man behind bars, he ain't going to do but train. He's a strong fighter, you know. You know, he's pretty good. I gave him, you know, he got a lot of credit. You know, I knew it was going to be a tough fight. You know, he gave everybody a tough fight. When you, you never saw him fight, were you nervous coming in here to prison? Oh, no, I'm never nervous. You know, I'm a fighter. You're going to be a fighter. Why should you be nervous? Do you think you've blown a chance now at the championship? No, because uh, you can't give a good man down. And I, and I want you to put this in the paper. I want you to let me finish. I want this in writing. After I knock out Rossman, I'm going to give Gregory a rematch because he gave me a shot. And he would, nobody else would do it. Gregory got the first shot at the title. James, the first shot. That's my word is my bond. You've been dreaming of this for years, working toward it, a lonely, a lonely vigil, a lonely journey. What are your real feelings inside now? Well, I hope Mr. Hadrack will let me go home now. <laughs> me, me and Al Dickens, the man been locked up. Here he is right here. Put the cameras on. The man been locked up 13 years. And everything I am in life, I owe to him. Everything. When I come back to prison, he gave me the incentive to go on and train. And another thing, if y'all can get to Muhammad Ali, Cassius Clay, as we call him, Al Dickens, the real Muhammad Ali, would like to knock him out. They don't want the title, just, a, just an exhibition bout. Ten look, get a good look, just ten rounds. He yeah. wants to go with Clay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Matthew. Is it, were you ever tired? It looked in the middle round that you might be a little tired. Okay, now I'm going to tell you the truth. After I dug that I could not break me out like I planned, the best thing for me to do, being that he's a knockout puncher, is to play tired. Because if you notice, every time it looked like I was tired, I come back with a flurry. So I fought my pace, clinching, holding, and kicking his behind. 
were you aware that he needed a knockout in the last few rounds? I told him in his ass, asked him, he's right over there. I said, boy, you need a knockout to witness here. I should run for you, but I'm going to bring it to you. Do you think your body shots told the difference? Uh, I think the head shots, because uh, I didn't get to his body like I wanted to. And the head shots confused him because he was dazed a few times. But I give Gregory for being credit for being the strongest fighter I ever fought in my life because I hit him with some good shots. What can oh, you yeah. do for a celebration here? What kind of celebration will you have? Mr. Hadrack and them got a, Mr. Hadrack and them got a steak dinner for me downstairs. And the fellas gonna carry me back to the ring. And I'm gonna lay up for two weeks and get ready for Rossman. That's my celebration. Let's